Hi, I'm Dr. Kelly Faulkner. I'm the Director of Polar Programs at the U.S. National Science Foundation. A little bit serendipitous. I, I was working uh, in Lake Baikal with a colleague and uh, we kind of got stuck working together on a small boat. I ended up learning a lot about the Arctic Ocean because that was his specialty and uh, he sort of painted some questions and problems and I said I can answer that so came back to the US after that trip and ended up uh, starting a career that that launched into research on Arctic oceanography well I think major changes are most evident in um, the Arctic overall it's definitely warming and um, in the Antarctic the area that's warming is restricted more or less to the peninsula area, and that's warming at about the same rate as the Arctic. So they're, they're over the last 50 odd years or so, they're warming um, you know, several degrees faster than the rest of the planet. That has big implications for um, melting of ice, melting of sea ice, land ice, and so forth. Um, it's our understanding that uh, the climate works in, when you add more greenhouse gases to the planet by amplifying the warming out in the polar regions. So according to expectations, as we're adding more CO2 to the environment, we are seeing those effects. Uh, the Antarctic is very far away, very remote, and among the most harshest uh, environments on the planet. So you really have to have a lot of know-how to get things done there. It's already super hard to do things in the cold period, but um, it's remote, it's windy, it's dry, uh, it's um, extremely cold, right? So all of those things combine to make it very difficult. Over the years, we've accumulated the know-how, and uh, we're pretty good at figuring out the variability that's also thrown at you, so. But it's still very hard. A lot of international collaboration in Antarctica. The Antarctic Treaty is set up um, so that you know all of the signatories have an active uh, interest in science, and then the consultative parties who can vote under the treaty system have an active and influential science program. And we do a lot of interaction um, to get our science done and to get our operations done. It is the case that Arctic sea ice is retreating. I mean, it's, it's got lesser area and it's becoming thinner. And I think when people talk about that, they often confound that melting of the sea ice with the rising of sea level. Any ice that's already floating in the ocean, and sea ice is formed from the ocean, and it's always floating in it, when it melts back, it doesn't change sea level. So it's confusing to people, but I tell them, go home, Take a glass, put some water in it, mark the level of the water. If you drop in an ice cube, that's equivalent to taking ice from land and putting it in. And you'll see the level will go up. Mark that level and wait for the ice cube to melt and see whether or not it changes. And then you'll teach yourself about why floating ice isn't, isn't contributing to sea level rise. The land that comes off, I mean the ice that comes off the land does contribute to sea level rise.